Eric Kuhn is the owner of The Haberdashery, the premier men's fashion store in NEPA. He has degrees from Penn State and Marywood and has been directly involved in high-end fashion since 2009. Welcome to another episode of ECTV's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today my guest is Eric Kuhn. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Good, how are you, Travis? Great, man, great. I'm so happy to finally get you on the show so we can sit down and have a really good discussion. But the first thing I like to do for my viewers is to allow you to tell a little bit about yourself. Uh, where are you from originally? Where did you go to school and some things like that? Okay, I'm from Dixon City, Pennsylvania, which is the northeast of this where we're being shooting. Um, I went to Penn State for a bachelor's degree and then I got a master's at Marywood. Um, and I own a uh, men's fine clothing store. I've been in fashion for over 10 years. Awesome, so Marywood and Penn State. So what, what degree did you get from Penn State? Penn State, I got a bachelor's in letters, arts, and sciences. Oh, wow. And what'd you get from Marywood? So Marywood, I got a uh, master's in business and communications. And so you actually took your degrees and did what you should do with your degrees? Well, I wasn't supposed to actually uh, go to Marywood. I was accepted to Penn to go to law school. Oh, wow. But I really enjoyed working at a private clothing store that I worked at, and the owner told me that it was a dream I could chase. So I decided to switch up. I went and got a master's, and I, that's why I can use this degree. I got my master's as uh, to hedge the bet while chasing building a business. Great, great. So uh, with the fashion thing, what, what really, really got you into fashion? Did you... Uh, grow up in a, a household full of fashion nieces like your your mom and your dad were really high fashion and high class or is it just something that kind of come out of the, of the love for dressing the love for dressing no one um no one in my house was very into fashion uh, my dad not my mom um, starting in school my favorite time of year was back to school shopping as far as I can remember, I didn't play sports, I didn't play video games, I just wanted to go back to school shopping. I, no one figures out where it, can, it came from, but that's, it's, my entire life has been like that. Wow, and that's, <laughs> that's weird, because most kids don't even really care about clothes. We went bicycles, like say video games, and doing other stuff like that, but you always had that eye for, for dressing nice, even as a kid. Oh yeah, I wish they would have kept the bicycle and bought me more clothes. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, so you're, you're uh, the name of your business is the haberdashery. Yes. And what, what, what does that come from? Where does that term come from? So the haberdashery was your original fabric maker um, when all of your clothes were handmade. And when I first started in the business, I went to work at a place called Friedman's. And my first day of work, my mentor said, are you ready for the crazy life of a haberdasher? I worked for him for three years before I did this and that just stuck in my brain and I said, well, what's old is new again and I think that's what I want my business name to be. Wow, and I like that uh, what's old is new because I'm not as trendy about fashion as you are, but over the years I've noticed that uh, me growing up in the 80s and 90s, a lot of those fashions are coming back. and. Um, are starting to like revolve. And it seems like fashion is sort of a revolving door where trends that last for a little while then kind of go out of style and then come back into style. It used to be a seven year cycle. It's kind of been extended more to 10 years and we've gotten a little more casual, but you're 100% right. Um, fit, function, form, everything has, goes out, comes back in again. Yeah, so with, with acknowledging that point, what helps a brand stay relevant throughout these, you know, ebbs and flows of, of trends? Uh, consistency. You're going to, you maybe don't want to change fit so much. Patterns are getting louder and brighter. Um, and you have to be on the cutting edge. You have to know people get bored. People get bored quickly, especially in fashion. I mean, you're already bored of the newest color a year from now. Um, that's, you'll see every year colors change. The major things may not change, like the lapels on a sport coat or how a shirt fits, but you'll go from pink being a hot color one year to purple being hot the next. Um, you'll see people going from drab colors, all grays and neutrals, to bright, flashy colors all at once. Um, so they just have to, they kind of compete, but they also work together to figure that out. They, they direct it. Um, when I go to Fashion Week, I'll see 
all of these brands showing me was going to come out a year in advance so i already have a heads up on that and you can see they're all kind of following the same idea and so so the fashion week thing this is a, a annual event for uh designers and uh, retail sellers and things like this so do you do you attend these events uh frequently or yeah it's biannual um so I will go in the summer to buy for fall and winter, and then I'll go in the fall and winter to buy for summer, and I buy a year in advance. And yes, I go twice a year every year. So my, my real question is for you is, <laughs> now we're in, in the Northeast PA area, and you travel to the larger cities, New York, for Fashion Week. And mm -hmm. so how do you determine what you think would be best to bring back to this area for your customers and clients in this area? Because sometimes a lot of the fashions can be a little bit over the top, especially things that's like coming off the runway in, in Paris and things like that. And then it seems like New York is like the secondary hub. Me not being really, you know, educated on fashion like that. But for me, it seems like Paris and France kind of is the main fashion hub but they're so over the top and then it seems like the things that they show us they'll kind of like tone it down a little bit and then you'll see a lot of these fashions start coming into the states but it's hard to like the stuff that you have you don't really find it anywhere else so like i say how do you how do you determine like what is going to sell best in this area okay so you're right but what you see on tv and magazines that's the designers being obnoxious, trying to get attention. Mm. What they're showing me in the back room is not that. They have that, but then they're showing me what they're really going to make. So when you see someone make this obnoxious, all mink sport coat, they'll make a couple, but what they're really having is in the back. That's just to get the attention. And when I first started, I was a little more calm. I wanted some loud, crazy stuff, but I didn't know... Like you said, we're in Northeastern Pennsylvania. I'm not in Miami right now. So how crazy can I get? Through building the business, I can get as crazy as I want. I am, I don't have a thousand customers. I have you know a couple hundred that come to me nonstop because they want to look like they're in Miami. They want to look like they're in New York City. So I've been blessed that I found a niche market where Ooh. these guys in any PA, Everyone says you're an NEPA, can you sell a purple sport coat? I've sold a ton. There are guys who want it and they have nowhere to go. So what I've done is I'm bringing New York, Milan, Paris fashion here. And I've just found the small group of men who do want it. That's, well, uh, me personally, I, I love to visit your shop and, um, and shop with you. I actually have on um, a brand that I that you introduced me to and that's something else too like the brands themselves and how can a, a brand a new brand take hold and be pos prosperous in you know a fashion market where there's thousands of other individuals doing the same thing so by and large fashion is about standing out the brand itself has to stand out you're wearing psycho bunny um I don't want to name drop, but people are tired of the little guy on the horse. They're tired of the little flag. They've, they've seen it for 30 years. They, so, you know, when I first brought in Psycho Bunny, um, the gentleman that owns my building says, a rabbit, you're gonna sell a rabbit? It's my number one brand. I, <laughs> everybody loves it because while the polo never goes out of style, people are tired of wearing the same polo over and over again. I mean men's fashion can get a little boring you could see somebody wearing the same polo they wore in the 80s and you know so that's not going to happen with your like you have the pink with the blue and the blue in the ears little details are really what sets it apart and that's what we need to do yeah uh the colors are are definitely a, a you know a must for me and it took me a while to actually wear more vibrant colors and i i I give you the credit for that for <laughs> thank you you know put me in a, a pink shirt and it looks good on me and i like it but uh the quality is is something that i i like even more than the colors like the texture of the fabric and um the fabric itself is so is that something that you really focus on is like the fabrics and the materials that are actually used for the pieces 
Yes, so there's nothing in my store that I sell that I won't personally wear. I mean, I'm basically a walking billboard, which is very convenient because I love clothes. Um, but I look at quality. I actually look at the company too, how well they'll work with me because I can only carry so much, but people want things. And I like knowing I can get anyone what they want when they want it. But I won't bring in anything that's lesser than. Um, people, have said, people have said things that maybe I'm, I'm probably the most expensive store in the area. I don't look at the price as much as the quality. Um, you can pay the same price as what I carry and get something that's lesser than. Yeah. I won't do that. Um, I don't believe in it. I want the customer to come back not because they need something, but because they want something. Yeah. And that's, I'm, I'm a really big believer in quality. Um, if, what's the old saying? Um, cheap stuff isn't good and good stuff isn't cheap. Correct. And so if you, if you want something of value, something of quality, it's going to cost a little bit more. But in the long run, uh, you're going to get what you pay for and be more fulfilled in your purchase, knowing that you, you purchase something of quality. Right. I mean, that like Psycho Bunny only uses 100 percent Peruvian Pima cotton. Some brands won't even use Pima cotton because it's so exceptionally more expensive than regular cotton. But that's all they'll use. And the moment you put on a polo from them, you kind of don't want to wear any other polo. And that's just that's the point. It's, we want you to feel like you're getting a good value for what you spent yeah. and you're standing out. Yeah. So uh, my thing is, um, I always like to say art imitates life and life imitates art. It's a really old saying. And some people, when I talk to people about being artistic or being creative, they say, oh, well, well, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And my first thing is, do you get dressed in the morning? Getting dressed is a, in itself is an art form. You have to match your attire. You have to coordinate and, and put an ensemble together that looks nice. And if you can dress nice, you're, you're being creative. You're being artistic. The way you season your food is culinary arts, you know? And so I, I uh, really admire you for your, for your fashion sense. Uh, you're one of the most well-dressed <laughs> men I've, I've ever met. And, uh, Thank you. And, um, I just uh, appreciate you for, for letting me um, see how the fashion world can uh, actually be more than what people think it is. It's just like, you know, models and all of this. But like you say, dressing nice makes you feel nice. And when you have really nice clothes on it, it boosts your self-esteem. Right. So, I mean, the fashion world, we can get um, a bad rap for being all pretense. You know, egomaniacs, we just want to flaunt. but. There's far more to it than that. Um, as far as being an artist, it, you wake up every morning, your body's your canvas and how you dress is how you're presenting yourself to the world every single day. Um, you can probably relate to this as being a painter. Sometimes people may come to you and commission something and they're not sure what it is they want, how they want it. Guys will come to me and they'll say, I want this outfit and I say, okay, well, how, what, are you, what are you seeing? What's making you think you want this? Or they say, I want to dress like the guy on TV. This actually happened. The guy said, I want to dress like um, Howie Long. Mm. He was on the NFL Network. Like, okay. I said, well, this is what you want. You want a blue suit with brown shoes. And he said, I don't wear brown shoes with blue suit, only black. I said, go through your phone and look at every single picture. I said, he's only wearing brown shoes with his blue suits. And he got comfortable and he tried it on. He goes, this is exactly what I want. And I said, you knew what you wanted, you just didn't realize. Mm. And that's my job is to listen to them. They'll tell me what they want, whether or not they realize they're doing that or not. And I just have to listen. Yeah. So is, is dressing a man easier than dressing a female? By and large, yes. <laughs> and wh why is that? Um, women have so many more options and um, physically, they have more curves than men do. Um, so it's harder to find a fit for every body type. I mean, men are pretty, you know, and men are by and large a little more classic in fashion. We don't have that many things that we get away from. Women can have skirts, mini dresses, long skirts, short skirts, different levels. I mean, pumps come in different heights. Men don't ha get into all of that. Ours is more traditional. Now we get crazy with colors and patterns and lapels, but 
body type and what we wear. It's, you know, dress slacks, jeans, sports shirt, dress shirt, t-shirt. It's not low cut, high cut, all that. So fitting women would be far more difficult than men. But when you have a man knows what he wants and knows how to fit, that could be, uh, that could be f difficult too. Yeah. So, so when, it, when it comes to catering to women and, and their s fashion and their sense of style, what do you do to help educate yourself on how to dress women? I listen to them. It's, I mean, I knew what was going to be hot in this area when I did the women's store, um, but I brought in a small amount and I asked them what they liked. Mm. And they're far more trend-driven than men. So in my men's store, all my jeans are about the same waist. Women have mid waist, high waist, slim like low waist. It just, it's crazy and their trend can switch like that. Men's isn't going to, but I just listen to them. They tell me what they want. I only wear high waist, I only wear crop top and I just, I pay attention and I adapt to my new orders. Well, uh, I don't know. One of my, one of my biggest fears is um, like shopping for women and I don't know, like, in relationships for gifts, birthdays, Christmas, or something like that, I always stray away from buying <laughs> uh, women articles of clothing just because I find it, like you said, it's difficult because the curves and the, and the sizes and the shapes. And so I wouldn't never you know what to actually purchase. I wouldn't want to buy something that's too big or too small or things like that. So that's why I ask, like, it just seems, like you say, women do have way more options and when it comes to their uh, dress and their outfits and stuff but so your your shop itself you have a men's in a women's department yes and um so but you sell more than just uh pants and shirts and jackets you sell shoes and bags and so i do every i try to do everything i mean i have underwear i have t-shirts i have belts i have shoes um, I also do services. I, I, I have a cobbler if you need shoes shined or resold. Um, anything you buy from me, I tailor for free of charge to make sure it absolutely fits you perfect. Um, I can do custom, full bespoke. You can come in, look at fabrics. We can make you a full custom suit. We can do full custom shirting. Um, I actually just had to deal with that with somebody who is um, uh, transgender. They're changing over. Mm -hmm and they can't find clothes that fit them properly because they want to wear um, men's clothes, but they don't have that build. So we have to do, we have to measure everything and do full custom. And that was actually uh, very interesting because they, would, they taught me everything I didn't know about transgender. Mm. And I was explaining to them everything that had to go into the clothes, why they weren't fitting the way they wanted to. And it was quite a learning experience because I love, if I listen to my customers, like I said, they'll tell me what they want and need. They may not know it, but they'll tell me. So what, what you're doing is bringing back a very old tradition of helping people get dressed. I, uh, I recently did a little modeling uh, gig for Sardano's? Uh, Sarno and Sons, Sarno's, yeah, tuxedo. And, um, and the guys were helping me do one, one dress change to another and uh, the gentleman took my jacket off for me and took the vest off and he, he put a new bow tie on me and helped me put the jacket on. And I said, I said, man, I could really get used to uh, having somebody dress me like this. And he himself said, well, this was what the haberdasher did. This was their profession to help men dress nice and look nice and look professional. And there's not a lot of people who take that much pride as you do in fashion to bring this tradition back of the haberdasher and, and the haberdashery to make men look good and feel good about themselves. Um, so what, what do you see for yourself in the future? How, are you, do you plan on expanding and growing this business or? So I would like to grow, um, but there's something that's given up in growing. Um, a lot of people, you could probably relate to this, have said that they don't buy the clothes, they're buying me because you can get the clothes anywhere. You can go, anything I sell is probably available online, but if you don't know what's gonna look best on you, what's gonna fit you, um, you know, Psycho Bunny could have two different fits. You may not know which fits best for you. Um, that's kind of, it, 
if you take me out of it, I don't know. If I were to expand, I'd have to have someone else that could do that um, and that cared as much. And that's really what customers seem to appreciate is how much I care. I, anyone who leaves my store, first and foremost, is a billboard for me. Um, like you said, you had a good experience. I hope everyone's had a good experience with me. Um, so I would like to expand, but there would be a deep fear that in expansion, what is special about the store would be lost. Yeah. So I'm not really sure. Um, I just had a customer, he has a health issue with tremors and he wanted a suit that would have room for the, the tremors, but he didn't want to look like he was in the wrong size suit. Mm. And I worked with him and we figured out what suit fit him best. We put him in a slightly larger size, but we tailored it down to where the tremors could still have room, but it mm. didn't look like he was wearing too big. They came and picked up the suit and brought me a bottle of wine as a thank you because I worked with them for over two and a half hours to figure out what fit him best and fit his lifestyle best, even to him having a hard time lacing shoes and figuring out a slip on that didn't look like um, it wasn't dressy enough. Mm. And I can't tell you how much that meant to me. They just, they got a bottle of wine for me just as a thank you. I mean, I was selling a product, they bought the product, but the time I took meant the world to them and that just, man, it made my week. <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely, I definitely picked that up on you. The first time I entered your shop is you care about what you do and you absolutely care about your customers and their satisfaction and their happiness. And I can absolutely see how you feel like if you hire someone else to run a, a second business for you, they won't have that same passion about it as you do. So I can definitely see the fear in expanding. You wouldn't want me to paint something and put paintings by the prints on it. No, 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 no. Yeah. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. <laughs> so um, you brought in a little selection of, uh, of your words, works that you have. Uh, could you uh, tell us a little bit about this jacket and shirt we have here? Sure, so this mannequin is a slim mannequin. So I went with the slimmest brand, which is uh, Masiao. He is an um, Italian designer. Now this is slim fit, peak lapels. This normally would have been considered to be a tuxedo jacket because it has the satin on the lapels. That rule doesn't apply anymore. Um, guys why, are gonna why is that? Funnest thing about fashion is breaking the rules. It really is. So and taking something that was considered high scale fashion and then wearing it more on an everyday type thing or? Yeah, it's, what I've seen with fashion is why not? You know, oh, cause it's always been done this way. That doesn't exist in fashion. Yeah. It's always been done this way. That's, that's gone. We didn't wear big watches with suits. We didn't mix different colors. Uh, now we do. Um, we'll wear brown shoes with a black suit because why not? If it looks good, it looks good. And um, that's, I like being a rule breaker. Yeah. And a lot of the guys that shop in my store do. Like you never wore pink. <laughs> now I have three or four pink shirts. <laughs> it looks good on and you. And it looks good on me. It does. But it took you to tell me, hey, pink looks good on you. Oh, so. if I had your skin tone, I'd only wear pink. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, is the shirt the same brand as the jacket? It, it is. So I put him in a very slim fit. I thought this was going to show up the best in light because I was going through, a, I knew we were doing a show and I was like, well, what's going to pop? I have very conservative stuff. I have plain white Oxfords. Um, you've, everyone's seen that. I wanted to bring something different for your show. Um, something that's really cool. Everyone used to think you had to wear a tie. I don't like ties, so I wear an unbuttoned shirt, but I'm very big if you're not gonna wear a tie that you should have a pocket square. Mm -hmm. Now, some guys don't wanna go get a bunch of pocket squares. This pocket square is actually built in, so. It's just something neat and different. So if oh, you're wow. traveling, you don't need to pack an extra pot. It's one less thing to have. And it's something different that he does. Um, I actually got you a gift. That's a shirt from this company. Oh, wow. And it actually has something that's really cool that I think too. Do you want me to? Sure. Okay. So this is going to look like just a uh, standard t-shirt. But if you look at the end, he put dress shirt sleeves and cuffs on it. Oh, wow. And then they flip. Eric, oh my God, dude. <laughs> this is so nice. I really appreciate it. And, and okay. then if you want to roll it up, that tab, there's a button on the sleeve, that tab will button it up. 
And this brand is that's Masio. Masio, your build. He is a slim fit, and he does athletic cut for muscles. And then you don't have to tuck it in. He finishes down here, so it's made to be untucked. Oh my God! Thank you so much, E. Oh, absolutely. This is so nice, and this is this is this is what I say. Like the eye you have for fashion is just unbelievable. <laughs> you know, it's just unbelievable. Since since you've known me and you've you've figured out my style, like now you can pick out stuff that you know would look good on me. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric. Um, I really appreciate you coming and having this conversation with me and teaching me all about fashion and and sharing your passion with our viewers. Anytime. Thank you for having me. This has been an episode of ECTV's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today our guest was Eric Kuhn.